Hello beautiful souls, Avalon here and today I would like to unbox the moon box live just as the title describes. I haven't done a live in a little while and um, I'm a bit excited for it. <laughs> So um, for those who have sent me lovely um, messages regarding my finger being broken, I have it unstrapped. It's this finger here. I have it unstrapped at the moment because I went camping and both of them were strapped together and it created an irritation in between my fingers. So I've just got to be very gentle. I can bend my hand, I can bend my finger, but what it feels like at the moment is like a seized joint, like uh, a metal joint that needs oiling. So I'm just being very gentle with it. <laughs> Um, but thanks so much for those who have joined in with me today. Um, like I said, I'm unboxing the moon box and I've not done a live moon box unboxing ever before. I usually do pre-recorded moon boxes, which are so much fun. But I thought I'm a bit behind on my unboxing because the moon box company sends me their moon box at pretty much the start of the month and we are now at the end of the month and they have been so beautifully understanding towards me because i've had a cold i've had a broken finger a broken phone i've had a lot of uh what could be perceived as misfortunes i've had a lot of that but i've shifted some of it most of it in fact and I'm just in the process of healing. My cold has gone away. My finger is starting to feel much better. The sun is shining. The birds are singing. I'm feeling good. My little girl was very sick last night with vomiting. She just vomited all night long, poor little darling. And um, and I stayed up and I watched, you know, by her side and just made sure she was all right. And I finally got to bed and it was close to three in the morning. And then, of course, I wake up usually about six o'clock in the morning because I have three children. And so I'm a bit tired today. So all I could think of doing was just, you know, joining in with you guys live. I really, really wanted to open the moon box. I never open it until I'm unboxing it. So it's not something that I get and then I tear apart immediately, even though every ounce of my being wants to because I find the moon box to be amazing. I find it to be an amazing product. For what you get, it is astounding. It is magic. You can feel the magic in these boxes. I'm telling you this from the fact that I have unboxed many moon boxes now and I've got to tell you each and every one comes with that vibration of magic. It is handmade so it carries that, that weight with it, that magical weight. The products are so thoughtfully created that nothing is cheap, nothing is bought sort of off cuff and lots of things are just one of a kind made specifically for those moon boxes. I have these, this beautiful um, air totem over here with rooster feathers, beautiful. I have the spirit loom hanging off the tripod of my hanging off the tripod of my camera. <laughs> that makes sense, right? I'm a bit tired. But I have that there. And the most important thing, I have the beads. I have these beautiful beads on my reader's table all the time. These are all Moonbox items. I have on my table at this very moment, they're oils. I can, I've, I can reach them. Hell, I can reach heaps of them, like, because they're here, because I use them. You know, they're not something that I put to one side. That's not the case at all. I really get a lot of use out of it. And I've got to say that the protection and banishment moon box has come in very handy for me as I have been exploring the concepts of protective magic, rediscovering the power of the evil eye. I have used the bast statue i've used the black candle i've used the horus symbol which is over there it's in a magical working at the moment so i won't grab it but the horus the eye of horus that was carved onto a piece of wood that's there um cedar cedar twigs um used it as well the protection barrier uh what was it called what's it called what's it called banishment barrier or spiritual barrier sorry i can't read i used this the other day with my raven i was working with the totem of raven raven is my totem and i took my raven skull out of the box and there was all these little tiny little raven feathers and one stuck and i just left it there i could pull it off really easily but that's just that's special right there so i've used that and you know i use their items to use in my witchcraft not just 
Little Witchcraft, I used a lot of their items in my protection and banishment of the evil eye very recently, as recently as four days ago. I, I worked with totem energy. I worked with, you know, lots of animal, raven particularly. I had my deer skin drum there. I had green ants close by. And I pulled out a lot of my moon box things because they were in, in complete alignment to the work that I was doing because they come with such an inherent magical energy that is of self-preservation in the kindest, most loving sense. And that is magical and that is protective and that is inspiring and transformative. So what they give you in their boxes are tools for complete transformation should you wish to go in that direction. These are tools to work with. You can work with them individually or you can work with them together in their packs as they come, utilising the things in which they come. Now, I'm a person that lives in the Northern Hemisphere and I have no problem working with any of the ingredients that they send me despite the fact that sometimes they're more matched with sort of Northern Hemisphere Sabbaths. It doesn't matter. Ostara is coming and I've saved, I've saved these beautiful candles from the April Moon Box. And I'm going to be using them in this weekend's Ostara gathering for my coven. And so, you know, I save them for when the time is coming. Sometimes they'll send me something that is very relevant. It's right there for me to use right at that moment. And I'm thinking, oh, my gods like me a lot. And they are really guiding me right now because I've received the very, very thing that I, that I am. Um, I'm, I'm in need of and sometimes that need is only apparent days after I've unboxed a moon box and I'm like oh my god in my head I'm like oh I wish I had a and I have it you know like wheatgrass braided wheatgrass which is up there from one of the moon boxes was one of the things that very recently I felt called to use and then I'm like where the fuck am I going to get braided wheatgrass from and then I'm like I have it because the moon box sent it to me come to me oil which as you can see of all of my oils the come to me oil is the lowest what does i tell you that i like it aside from the fact that it is a magnificent perfume this is one of the most fragrant oh my god it's one of the most fragrant oils i'm wearing it right now i'm wearing it with my lilith oil i'm wearing lilith perfume and come to me oil just because and in order to help me get into a really good space of mind this morning i you know i prepared my home with the exception of washing the dishes which i'll do later if i do it at all today quite frankly my husband might want to do them um but i got into the shower i washed my hair i put in a treatment i used lush body products from head to toe, I'm talking scrubs, body moisturizers, facial uh, scrubs, body jellies, oh, you name it. I, I love Lush products and I used it and I find that when I do so, it is such incredible self-care for me and it puts me in a really great mindset. So I'm very clean skin with the exception of my Ruby Woo MAC lipstick that I'm wearing right now because I needed to give my face a little tiny bit of color. So enough about that. Let me just go ahead and read some of the comments that I'm getting. So allow me to just uh, divert my attention for a moment. Um, firstly, I'd just like to say hello to everyone. Hi. <laughs> um, thank you for the welcomes back. Yay, yay, yay. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, dear. Sacred secret, everyone. <laughs> Hi. Thank you, Alina. Oh. Thanks, Earthly Alchemy. And let me just say, when I very briefly touched on the subject of the evil eye, this is a very real thing for me. This is something that I have experienced in the last couple of weeks, if not, like, let's say let's say two months. Let's just say two months, okay? Um, it might not have begun as full on as a broken finger or a broken phone, which, by the way, I took to be repaired they couldn't find anything wrong with it it just doesn't work it doesn't work it's an iphone 6 that i've had for about 15 months not even that long maybe less time than that i don't know um but i've bought i've purchased a new phone now anyway but it was just really odd occurrences and i spoke to a few other people and um, some in in Australia here, some other magical practitioners in Australia and others very close to me in America. We were all going through something very similar. So it prompted me to write a 
a blog post about the evil eye. And I don't blog post, guys. If you've been hanging out with me for a really long time now on my social media journey, you'll know how often I blog, and that is not often at all. It's not often. I sometimes go through a little phase, but you're never going to get more than two blogs a year out of me usually. And right now I'm in this magical protective mindset. I'm rediscovering my magical protections and I'm writing about what I'm discovering as I go through because I'm making incredible revelations and I'm being forced to make incredible revelations and face some of the habits, some of the fluffier habits, some of the nicer habits, some of the less functional habits. I'm not sure even how to put it, just some of the habits that I've fallen into that are not helpful to me at all. So with that said, Sage Clark, hi everyone, I'm so glad I caught you live. I wanted to talk to you about something. I started watching your videos a few weeks ago and was a bit taken aback. Hi Sage, how are you going? Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have a look-alike. Sage is uh, my look-alike. I'll have to look you up on social media, Sage. <laughs> um, Alina, I can never do unboxings because I'm a child with my packages. <laughs> Alina Morton says she can never do unboxings because she's a child with her packages. But they sometimes don't make it into the apartment. Look, I can sympathise. I have become very, very good at delayed gratification. That's what my um, best, one of my best friend's husbands, who is a spiritual counsellor and a life coach and things like that, he calls it delayed gratification. I call it like being a grown-up, but he calls it delayed gratification. And, um, and it's about receiving something and then just holding on to it and not opening it and, and just delaying that process. I don't do it for that. I do it because... I can't, I can't open up all of my packages all at one time. I just, A, I don't have the space. B, I don't have the energy. And C, I just like to space it out for times when I'm feeling like now I am a little bit tired, a little bit, just a, a need for a little bit of like, yay. Um, and I always get a little yay from the moon box. So I've got my scissors. It's ridiculous how these, how far these scissors have come. These scissors have been with me for a very long time. They are sewing scissors. I did have more of them. I think they came in a pack of three, but these ones proved incredibly helpful for decks. So I don't want to wedge big, blunt scissor ends, you know, into decks because it's delicate work. So ideally, my next pair of scissors will be finer than this. But this is working. So here's what I've got. I haven't even taken it out of the box, right? It's totally, see? It's there. It's totally wrapped up. There you have it. It's totally, totally wrapped up. So let's just get started because I did say to you that I was going to unbox the moon box and instead what I did, I just talked and talked and talked about myself. So I apologise. Let's get into it. Ooh. People have started to ask me why it is that I've edited my videos. I get a lot of interruptions and also I struggle a bit with packages. It sometimes takes me ages to get through a package. But since you're all live with me, I can sort of just talk to you about how I'm going and it's not so boring. Sometimes I'll be thinking, going, oh, come on! <laughs> I've just got to be a bit, um, a bit delicate too with my finger. So sticky, I really need to clean you. I say this all the time. It's so sticky, like <laughs> I've seen so much sticky tape. Ta -da! A little paper buffer for the top. And there's a paper buffer for the bottom too. Yay, and because I put the paper buffer in the bottom, the box came out really easily. I have received some boxes that I've been like in the middle of filming and I'm like, okay, and I'm just going to get the box out of the box now, the box out of the box. And I, 
to sound silly and i'll be sitting there shaking it and then i'll be like oh my god this is taking forever and the camera will still be rolling and i'll be like shaking it and then when i go to edit it out i had been like trying to get the box out for about four minutes <laughs> that's why I edit okay so here we have it out of its little box it feels fat feels fat look at that it's bowing right there it's not sitting flush it's not sitting flush it's bowing it feels fat which is very exciting good for you moon box good for you I love their logo don't you guys think that their logo is so pretty let me just keep up with some of this um Five. angelic inspirations with susan ray yes yes you should have heard great things because the moon box is great <laughs> um that and shipping oh yes shipping shipping yes shipping is always an issue they do have gorgeous like it that's right all righty all righty so here we go the box is the same every time it's the same every time i give them to my daughter to play with she ultimately destroys them uh, but they last a very long time she likes to play things like shop and you know put her little treasures her journals my daughter is a crazy mad journaler right now if you were to see our kitchen table the entire five or six seater dining table is covered in paper and she's cutting up a storm and there's washi tape there and there's two of her journals like close by and she's she's hella into arts and craft and hella into journaling and she just occupies her time she's home because it's school holidays and my little bubba is asleep at the moment so <gasps> sweet mother of <sighs> Give me a moment to just sniff this. I don't want to rush any of this. I don't want to rush it. <laughs> this smells like a blueberry with a dash of vanilla, a little bit of like geranium, something deeper, something a bit deeper. Can't quite put my finger on it, but it's so good. So good. Here we go. Ah, this is from the Earth Power Oracle, which I have. Yay. And so this is my Oracle card, the Cathedral of Notre Dame. The feminine divine is alive in all spiritual practices. Places of power remain places of power. I am full of love and tolerance. This is something that is timely for me. I'm full of love and tolerance. My daughter's going to come in here. Hello, Savannah. Would you like this beautiful little thing for your arts and crafts? It's already in a ribbon, but you can pull the edges and you can do something special with that. Your journaling as well. You can have some of this paper for your journaling, okay? Oh, good work. See, we recycle here in this household. <gasps> Okay, so this is the Equinox. This is the Equinox. I can tell because the letter is smaller than the plaque and the plaque clearly says Maybon or Mabon if you're an Australian like me and like to bastardize English words. Ah, forgive us. Forgive we convicts and our accent. We feel the changes deep within our bones the everlasting connection to the universe around us, expressing the need to let go of those things that no longer serve us, to harmonize and balance ourselves in every way, to prepare for the coming winter as the dark half of the year hides behind the shadow of the oak tree. The equinox is upon us, reminding us in every way to recenter, reevaluate and release. What are those things that no longer serve us, that we refuse to let go of? Why does it continue to tighten its grip around the beautiful potential that we have cultivated in our souls? As we work now to release our spiritual burdens and focus on balance, we begin to prepare for the successful remaining months. We have spent many moons 
curating the special items in this box, meditating and enchanting our intentions are pure. Our convictions are strong. Okay. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> it's not my time for Mabon, but it is my time to reharmonize. And instead of entering the shadow, I'm entering the light time. So, like I've said, despite the fact that at times there's I get a Sabbath box that's more in tune with the northern hemisphere, it I can still use it. And these will remain with me until next year when it's my Mabon time and I'll break them out and I'll and I'll use them. It's like I have them already. <laughs> and so this is how the letter has come. They change the fonts at the top there from time to time to match, to match their theme, so to speak. And so let's go through the inventory. Am I missing questions? If you have a question regarding the Moonbox or any other question, could you please put it in capitals? So as I'm scrolling, I can discern which is a comment from a question, please. Thank you very much. Okay, so the magical items in this box are as follows. Green Man Fall Plaque. You have it, the Green Man Fall Plaque. Now, I have a fall plaque up there. Not a full plaque, sorry. I have another plaque up there. I have another plaque over there. Uh, I love their plaques and I plan on doing something special with them when I can get my took this into gear. So, this is beautiful. It comes with a cardboard backing, so you can see it's not something that will dent very easy and it's just lovely. It's got the half sun and half moon down the bottom there. It's got the acorns, it's got your rune symbols, it's got your pentacles. Here. and it's just lovely it's lovely I'm going to place it up to the side. okay so that is the first one then and the, this is what I'm looking at now I've, I've the plaque is always at the top but then what's underneath is yet to be seen okay so that's what I see it's absolutely beautiful I love the wine color of the paper it's the colour of my hair at the moment. I have this like crazy balayage thing going on. The very ends of my hair are really light. Or light to red, if you know what I mean. Okay, so we have Triple Enchanted Acorn Rune Set. Cool. Feu Dagas. Mm. What you need to do is, if you would like to know anything about runes, is Norse Pagan Tarot, which is here. He's actually Scandinavian by descent, or is Germanic the right term? You tell me, Soren, if, which term you prefer. But he's doing a rune series on his channel, and I like it. Okay, so Enchanted Sunflower, Rough Amber, Concordia Spell Candle, <clears throat> Flidaeus, 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 yes, Flidaeus, just pronounced it differently. Magical oil, either sacred salt, apple cinnamon incense, apple cinnamon incense. <sighs> that must be what's smelling so good. White, white sage and yarrow blend, corn silk. Erdica, so nettle, oracle reading parchment paper, and then the Sabbath celebration items, uh, the Book of Shadow artwork, and the Mayborn offering candle. So let's have a bit of a look at it all. Peeling away the layers. So I've peeled away the top layers to reveal the bubble wrap. There you have it. That's what it looks like. Everything comes so thoughtfully packaged. I say that each and every time, especially relevant for those who are who are ordering this box internationally. And mine comes international because the Moonbox company is based in the States and they ship out all the way to Australia. And I've never had anything break, ever. And some stuff that they've put in here is delicate. Hey, Savvy. Do you want some bubble wrap? 
Who does it? What child doesn't like bubble wrap? Okay. The child in me is really liking this right now. You want that? There you go. Okay, so we have corn silk. Here's corn silk. There you go. This is nettle. As you can see. <laughs> this is the yellow and white yellow. I'm looking at it, it is yellow in contrast, but it's yarrow, yarrow. I'm, I'm a bit tired, folks. I went out to get a coffee and I actually try, I'm trying to avoid coffee because it sort of like reacts with me nowadays. I've had so much coffee in my life. I'm Brazilian. I grew up on coffee and it makes me anxious now, like abnormally anxious. Like I know when I drink coffee that I'm all like anxious, but I don't know why. And then I realize it's because I've drunk the coffee. So I'm trying to avoid it. So when I go out, I get like a chai latte and good. But it's also very soothing. It's what you would have at the end of the night to help to lull you to sleep. So instead of helping myself, I make the situation worse. But I'm minutely happy. At, well, actually, not minutely. I'm incredibly happy in that moment that I'm drinking it and then immediately wish that I had more. Just guzzle back. <laughs> but it's not helping to wake me up. Okay, so again, yarrow and white stage. And it's milled quite finely. You can see it's not a fine powder, but it's already started if you wanted to pour that straight into a mortar and pestle and bang out a magical incense. Now, if you've ever worked with white sage, then you will know that the whole pieces of white sage, they can be very tricky to cut, to, you know, to pound down in a mortar and pestle. You need a pretty good mortar and pestle to do that. Um, so cutting little bits of it here and there is great. So when it comes like that, the work has already been kind of done and then like grinding it is just like, it's the last step. So I really like it. I'm gonna have a little sniff because everything smells really good. There's a freshness to their herbs. You can tell, you can tell. I have a lot of herbs on my shelf as you can see here. Some have been here for a very long time. They don't retain the same fresh smell. I use all of these herbs for incense making. I don't use them for tea. I have different herbs that I keep in the freezer for tea. So this is specifically for, you know, magical esoteric uses and for balms, flying ointments and things like that which I don't make myself, I have a coven sister make. I just give her the ingredients and go, here, take the belt on her, take the mandrake. <laughs> Woo, oh, look, it's so pretty. Oh my gosh. Stop it, fan, stop it, fan. Look at that. Okay, let me see if I can do this with any kind of elegance. There we go. It reminds me of Lord of the Rings. The Hobbiton green, the forest green of the Hobbits. This olivine sort of forest green is easily my one of my favourite colours in the whole wide world. Green is my favourite colour. Turquoise green, forest green, olivine green, plant green, grass green. I just really like green. Okay, well, this is very soft. Oh, these are the little acorns. They weren't joking. Look, the little acorns. This is a little baby one. <laughs> That's so fun. I've never held an acorn before, so imagine my delight. I've held a gum nut. Is this for me? Do I have another unboxing? 
All right, I'll get to this one next. Thanks, Rennie. It's Savvy. My daughter just packaged something up for me. I told you she was creating at the table. She's, she just packaged something up for me. What am I missing here? <laughs> uh, earthly alchemy. I love unboxings too. <laughs> Cave Mama Bear. <laughs> Other ones, the bubble wrap. Bubble wraps are really bubbles full stop, whether it be wrap or like soapy bubbles. Just enchanting to children of all ages. I want to subscribe. October should be a great month. I saw that October's moon box, and I only saw this because I hadn't opened this one yet, and I wanted to know the theme so I could at least put the theme down, and I couldn't find the September one, so it's been moved out of the current, and it will be put into the past moon box. That's something that take, they take their time to do, and so I didn't know the theme of it, and so I, I left it themeless, but I did see next month's as a result of this little hunt, and it's the Veil moon box. And it looks about the witchiest thing I've seen in a really long time as far as the subscription room, the boxes go. So good. It looks like, whoa. <laughs> okay, so what have I got here? Something in this. Oh, this is the amber. They're not mucking around with this amber. This is not your standard, see this? This is not your standard little baggie. This little baggie here and this little baggie here, totally different. So they have gone for a thicker plastic to really help to protect it. It's really thick. If you have ASMR, that would be heaven. Listen to that. I'm giving myself tingles right now. It's the little things, I'm telling you, it's the little things. Look at that amber. Look at that raw amber. This is my palm, this is the amber. So it's a decent size. It's a decent size. Let me put it up next to a five ounce. I, I believe that's a five ounce. There you go. Gives you some perspective. So fragrant, so fragrant. This reminds me of the fragrance of a few moon boxes ago. It's a different fragrance, but it is as fragrant, as fragrant. Now, I find all the moon boxes to be fragrant. This one and the one a couple of months ago were hands down the most fragrant. You know, I'll, I'll leave that in the plastic for the time being just in case. Okay, here we have the salt. Now, for a little while, they went to a packaged salt, um, and I guess that was space saving for the time. But I'm glad that they've come back to this one because you can actually see the salt and you can mix it around and you can shake it and you can really activate it. I find that just by shaking the salt and allowing your intention to really get in there, it's just. You can dance with it. I get really carried away as a witch. I get really like I move a lot and I dance a lot, and it's very easy for me to find a rhythm. Could be that I'm Latin. This is nice. Let's smell it now that I've shaken it up enough. Oh, it's so honey and honey and chamomile. It's a warm soothing setting sun like the grandfather sun scent it's really like I love how they weave botanicals they just throw in they throw in like plant matter favorite thing I occasionally get a really lovely and oh so thoughtful care package from a friend of mine um, she's actually watching at the moment. This is Cave Mama Bear. And I've never seen anyone wrap anything quite so thoughtful. The last time she wrapped something for me, I've got them here on my altar, just so you know, Jessie, because I keep them. She had, like, fresh lavender and, like, green matter and little feathers. Like, 
these people who've thrown all this earth and nature into their creations just as like little embellishments have won my heart they have simply won my heart i will take this over glitter any day i'm actually here's a fun fact i don't love glitter i mean i like the touches of glitter on certain things there are some candles that come and they've got little splashes of very fine glitter but as a rule i don't like the glitter i don't we're all friends we can share facts about ourselves can't we ah this is what's creating the beautiful scent this you're looking at my new favorite stick and scents sweet oh you're so good Sava, smell this what do you think it's not a little end of it so good smell this sand savvy smell the sand i mean salt cool and awesome did you hear that cool and awesome would you like to create with this and would you like some of this you can use you can glue with that you know glue. yeah you can glue it look you can actually use some washi tape and if you straighten the middle of it like that you can put some washi tape down and it'll be fuzzy on both sides and you can just create something really cool with it yeah. Cute. <laughs> <laughs> hi alvine how are you going all right, so I've got, I've got two things. Oh, okay, I'm going to go this one. This one's going to go first. I do believe there are two candles in this. One candle being a special Sabbath gift. It's pretty. Look at that. That is so nice, and it's got little bits of green stuck to it. Little bits of green rolled in there. And if you're wondering, this scroll in the center, it's not just a logo. Behind this, there is a spell. If you want to use it, there is a spell, an incantation, a poem, a write up of some description, a creative work by the moon box. And you can use it. You can use it as is. You can change it to. To resonate more with what you're trying to say you can use it as a jumping off point or you can read it out burn it in the um, spirit that it was created and go ahead and create your own there is so much that you can do with this but like i've said to you the moon box they give you a full ritual in a in a box in a single box so you can use everything in this box if you had no other witchy ephemera of any kind if you had nothing else if you had no other altar ob objects if you had none of that you could get your moon box you could lay it down on a table and arrange it in such a way that you have a ritual space created just from one of the moon boxes if you're fortunate enough to have a pot plant or a garden you would go out you'd grab little embellishments and you'd throw that on the table as well but i'm a tourist so i like to decorate and that's something else that i would add you know but you can even use this stuff here this packaging material oh, a dried sunflower you're just making me happy just smells like honey look savvy it's a dried sunflower <laughs> oh my gosh this is such a great symbol and because it's been dried it is such a beautiful and natural symbol of the waning sun this is also a beautiful symbol of the sun that is about to make me wane we have 
very intense summers here, not just in Australia. Australia, all around Australia, has intense summers to the point where parts of Australia catch on fire. It's so hot. In the north, we don't catch on fire, although there can be minor little fires up here. But we mainly hit that humidity level of 96% on a daily basis with a temperature up in the, um, the 38 to 39, you know, skimming almost 40. And the heat is no joke. You're rocking air conditioners the whole time. You go out and the, the state of the natural environment, the humidity and the heat and any physical movement that you do in that circumstance, it just depletes you of your energy reserves straight away. So water and shade, so trees and rivers and beaches and things of that nature are the places that you want to be if you're ever going to leave your house <laughs> or the inside of your house the closest to an air conditioner that you can be. But you eventually look like this. You spend enough time out in the sun in the summertime and you will look like this. There's some Australians here in this chat group. Just, you know, Aussies, I just really want you to go there and tell them how hot our country is. <laughs> they will not believe us. <laughs> okay yeah good for weight loss you only have to walk five steps and you've already shed <laughs> your winter weight oh my gosh i'm gonna have to rip this so this is another candle i said there was two candles here Look at this. Ooh. Savvy's giving you the double oo. It is my favourite colour. It is my favourite colour to wear. This is my favourite colour to wear. I know I said that my favourite colour is green and I stand by that, but I also have quite the fetish for this burnt orange. If I could dress myself in only this colour, I would. I have skirts of this colour. I have lipsticks of this colour. I just, I have flashes of this colour throughout my entire wardrobe. I have a lot of fire in my natal chart, so I tend to gravitate. Lots of Aries, lots of Aries for me. Probably explains why I clash with my type A Aryan mother. <laughs> but enough about that. <laughs> Okay, so we've got an oil that comes um comes in this little bag, not as strong as the amber bag, and it is always wrapped up in some bubble wrap. Sana, got more bubble wrap for you. There you go, Bushy. And so, Flidius, this is the oil. The oil, yeah, my favourite part. Mm. Oh. I can't get enough. I'm going to put you on this hand, on this wrist. Oh, wow. You went there. Oh, yes, I want mm -hmm. some of this, baby. Oh, look, and you got some glitter by accident. Here you go. Have some more glitter. <laughs> My poor daughter. Oh, thanks, darling. Look what she just made me. A, a little a little earthly bouquet. Looks like a um looks like a root system. She really went went there with natural creation. 
got so much dry matter on my lap right now and I'm not even shaking things around, if you know what I mean. Okay, so this looks really intriguing. Just making sure that that's in. I haven't lost anything. They do give you a considerable amount of packaging. like So you need to check it to make sure. And as you can see, like there's little green matter all the way through it. It's thoughtful from start to finish. So I've got this, which feels very heavy. King. Sava! He's got such a kind face. Doesn't he have a kind face? Look at that. I need to put him. Yeah. I need to prop him up somewhere. I need to really prop him up. I yeah, love I him. And there's like a great little stand up. A stand? I could, yes, I could do that. Absolutely. He's leaning up against a kind of a tusk. Yeah, he's leaning up against a tusk. Isn't that beautiful? What did you guys think? <laughs> what have we got here? I'm just going to catch up on some of the. Um... <laughs> you say that you hate the cold until you've experienced the heat. No extreme, neither extreme cold nor extreme heat are pleasant. So we all have our our burdens. So if you live in the north, you have some snow to deal with. If you live in the south, you have a lot of sun to deal with. And we wish, of course, for the latter, right bang in the middle of our extreme. We wish for the other extreme just to sort of quench our extremities, and that's the way that it works, isn't it? Grass is always greener, isn't it, guys? Only we all know that it's not. <laughs> um, what else? Okay, so that's about all should probably unbox my daughter's an impressive use of washi tape mummy's doing an unboxing because you know she made it so i've got to unbox it she made it with all the goodies that i have given her so that's, that's a lot of um there we go. Oh, I got a pencil, an eraser, a tiny little plastic animal that is her sister's, not hers, <laughs> and a handmade book with a pretty picture on the front of it. It's okay. Pretty sweet. I love my package, Savvy. <laughs> so yes the moon box was incredibly beautiful for those who are celebrating Maybon, you will love it for those who are not selling maybon it's celebrating may with the words that i need come on for those who are not celebrating the season or the Sabbath of Maybon and instead are journeying through Ostara, heading 
straight into Beltane, then that's okay. You can still use the herbs, the salt, the sunflower. You can save the acorns, but you can use some of the acorns, like Feu, for instance, as maybe like wealthy talisman. Put that one out in the sun if you want to really charge it. Uh, Sorin can tell you how to use it more effectively than I ever could. Um, and, of course, the candle colours are only relevant to your spell. If you want to save your candles for the Sabbath, then save them for the Sabbath. But if you want to save it for your spell work, then wait for that time where you need a spell. The orange, that burnt orange, beautiful, sparkly candle will be a perfect creativity candle. A perfect candle for creativity. And I made an act of creativity. I made this. I just rolled over bubble wrap and I'm like, that's an awesome sound. Um, I recycled a master's food shaker and I ground up really finely this particular incense that smells like smells like garlic a little bit because it's an old garlic shaker, which I did wash, but you can never get the smell of garlic out of anything ever. Um, but it is my happy home. So in an act of creativity, I made that and I would happily burn that candle in alignment with this. I'd make a mojo bag. I'd use some of this tangerine quartz that came with the moon box. Look, I can whip up a, a ritual out of anything. I really can. It doesn't, I don't have to think very hard about it. I can just do it. It's really good times. But the one thing that I do like about the moon box is that they stock you up. You subscribe to the moon box for a full year. Thank you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> felt like a bat was attacking me or a really big gangly spider that likes to dance or an air jellyfish. It's quite nice. Oh, that tickles. <laughs> oh, keep doing that. That's so nice. <laughs> it is relaxing. I'll, I'll be I'll be finished shortly, sweetie. Do you want to wait for me out there? Mm -hmm. Put the kettle on for me. Click the switch. Thanks, babe. Never asked her to do that before, so I was just like, she looked at me like. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So if you subscribe to the Moon Box for a full year, you will have a full year's worth of ritual items to work with and at the end of the day when you're working ritual in a very biospheric sense or just a very earthy type of witch and an earthy type of spiritual approach then you don't need the necessary ephemera that most other people have in their sacred spaces you know wiccan-esque kind of ephemera i'm talking you know it, ornate chalices and beautiful athames which are absolutely lovely i have ornate chalices and i have a a beautiful athlete but they're they're time specific I don't use them at each and every one of my rituals I use them for high holidays I use them you know for very special occasions my athame is black it's made of a black obsidian obelisk that to me is an athame tool uh, an athame tool yes but a souring tool is what I meant to say uh, so full year subscription will get you uh, just so much goodies, so much goodies. If you get three, three herbs with each of your boxes, and they're decent amounts of herbs when you're making specific incenses, you know. And lots of other herbs can be cultivated from, you know, your own personal garden, a friend's garden, supermarkets, uh, you know, farmers markets, things like that. Um, buy, swap, and sell exchanges and things like that. So you can amass a really good you know, herbal apothecary of your very own quite quickly and the, the moon box will give you a good zhuzh in that um, direction. You'll get beautiful crystals, stones, dry goods. In this case, there was a piece of amber, but then there were also acorns. And so that's, that's a wood or a sacred wood or a talismanic uh, object that you can use at any time. Just because Mabon comes and goes, if you're experiencing Mabon at this time of the year, just because it comes and it goes doesn't mean you can't use these objects again. And you don't have to wait just for Mabon to use these objects either. 
So, you know, you can work intuitively with these items, you know, and because they send out such amazing, like look at this fair element one with the rooster feathers. You have totemic ritual work that you can do. You can work with the totem of the rooster. You can work with this, what is it called? Um, manzanita wood and it's sacred wood it's sacred feather it's it's sacred symbol for air you can really work with that at any time of the year the candles for candle magic at any time of the year in accordance with your purpose the crystals at any time of the year the salt at any time of the year you know it's an any time of the year box yes it's got a few little themes bits and pieces here and there not always of course uh, the banishment and protection one was non specific to a sabbath so you do get ones that are non-specific to a sabbath and just specific to a theme and so you know i love the moon box i'm not joking i just i love them i don't endorse things that i don't like and i don't i get lots of people ask me to unbox things and i say no quite a quite a good amount of time because i'm quite dedicated to the moon box and what they deliver i'm quite i'm I'm very, very passionate about what they create. Um, and when I say I'm very, very passionate, I mean that because I personally have a problem and I and I did a little rant about this. When I say rant, I use the term very, you know, loosely, but I have, for those of you who don't know, I have an Australian witchcraft Facebook group. It's called Australian Witchcraft. And we have been on that group, we have been talking about, you know, witchy creators, essentially, people who own businesses who create certain things. And how there are far less of those people here in Australia than there are in different parts of the world, mainly America. America has some amazing, America and Canada, amazingly creative people. UK, amazingly creative people. They have access to different kinds of ingredients, to different kinds of like glassed vessels that are so intriguing to us here in Australia that you have this, you know, want for this, which is created overseas. The labelling is beautiful. There's just an access and an ease to things overseas that we don't have here in Australia for some reason. And then, of course, when you look at purchasing overseas to here, the shipping is a big deal, right? And so that's one of the reasons why a lot of people here in Australia don't go for the moon boxes because for the, sh the shipping is quite high. And there's nothing that, that sellers overseas can do about that because the shipping is governed, you know, by their by you know by their laws by their international laws in some places you could send a package like take for instance from the uk for the uk if i'm shipping something to the uk I, they have to pay the shipping cost for it and then they have to pay an import tax on top of that to get it in which is just so stupid it's just so greedy and stupid but you know what I'm not going to gripe about that kind of stuff. But we were talking about how um, my original statement where we've been talking about thoughtful handmade creations. So let me give you an example. I have the Millennium Gaia statue. And I'd always wanted the Millennium Gaia statue. It's such an iconic statue. I was fortunate enough to be gifted it in colour and in bronze over there. So I have two of them. And I love them. I love them beautifully. They pale in comparison to this. This is a Anaturian altar statue of my Emanja. And I have another one of my Iyasa. You will not find this anywhere, this one of a kind magical creation. Talking about, we were talking about these one of a kind, beautifully, you know, made creations from really talented individuals that are not your generic you know find them in a major new age store or find them in a major you know stockist of some description the same sort of chalices the same sorts of incenses like i take handmade all of the time and not just handmade but handmade from witches if i want an incense I want it from a witch. I want a witch to make it. If I'm not going to make it myself, and I'm very good at making incense, it's one of my skills, but I'm not going to make it myself. I want it made from a witch. I just recently um, purchased some owl masks for a ritual for my coven, and they were made for by a witch. She informed me in the most thoughtful way how she created it, what she used to create it with, and the information that she used in order to tap into the energies of the creature and the mythology that I'm personally working with as part of that, that is something you do not get from anywhere that is mainstream. 
You don't get that mass marketed. You get that one on one. And I think when it comes to objects of witchcraft, it has to be one on one like that. It has to be small scale. It has to be. It can't be mass marketed because it starts to lose that that um, that beautiful unique. When Anna made these two statues for me, she didn't make two of them. She made one at a time. If she were to make another one, they would look completely different. You know, and I know now that when I'm looking at these beautiful statues that were made for me by a witch, that I'm getting something that was very unique, you know, very unique with me in mind. And that's how I feel about the moon box. They send five, 10, 15, 20. Each, each moon box has a different type of, of plant. This is not the same kind of plant. What I have here, the energy of this plant, yes, it is. It's yarrow and white sage, but it's yellow, this particular yarrow and white sage it's this particular it's this particular um sunflower it's not this in plastic recreated a dozen times it's still very natural it's all very handmade and um and each item yes there might be 10 sunflowers there might be 10 orange candles but they're still handmade and they're still quite unique and i love it i think it's amazing and, um, and if you were hesitating on investing, then I can understand shipping is a very, very big deal um, for many people in many places. But if you're worried about not getting your value for money, then I assure you, you're not you're not going to be disappointed. Each moon box comes chock a block full of things. I can give you a nice little a little countdown of what you have here. You have one, two, three, four, five. Well, Let's count the acorns as one object, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen objects. You have sixteen objects. That plaque, the beautiful plaque, was one of the Sabbath gifts, and then you have another Sabbath specific gift. You get a lot, you get a lot of beautiful stuff. And, um, and I think it's a nice way to treat yourself as well. So that's about it. <clears throat> that's what we strive to do in our business. That's right. Earthly Alchemy is one of those, you know, one of those Australian-based companies that, you know, service the Australian um, population. But he is as rare as hen's teeth, folk. I, could, I, I, can, I can say Earthly Alchemy. I can say Elfenheim. I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but I purchased some stuff from Elfheim or Elfenheim. I'm sorry if I'm butchering the name. And I would happily go back there again and, and, and purchase more because they are great. Elfenheim, they have a good selection. All aside, it's not, it, it's not what I would call your one-stop shop. It's very specific. You will get pelts. You will get herbs. You will get liquid resins. You'll get jewellery. You'll get all sorts of things. You'll get great books. You can have a look at their website, and it's fantastic but it's not all encompassing i'm yet to find one of those um one of those stores that are all handmade but all encompassing if you know what i mean and basically i'm asking for the world when i say these things so i'm very happy to purchase individually from australian made and if i if i can't find it in australia i'll go overseas and i'll get it from overseas but you know the moon box shop is one of those places that gives you genuine handmade items they have a few things obviously they didn't make the plaque um but that's a gift that you would get on the side and they did make that beautiful thing they did make this i don't think i can reach it it's the loom they did make this beautiful loom they've made some of their statement pieces and i've got to tell you it it shows it shows in just their creative uh their creative approach. The packaging is beautiful. The um, thoughtful nature of the items selected are beautiful. This is not something that you would necessarily put together yourself. So it's beautiful to receive to receive something that has come from the vision of somebody else who is very very attuned to their craft. And and it's wonderful. It's wonderful to 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 receive a gift like this in the mail and open it up and allow it to brighten up your day as witches we love this right we love this stuff as witches give us witchcraft items give us tarot decks give us oils give us incenses and herbs and candles just give us this stuff because this is what lights me up personally on the inside i'll take this over makeup i'll take this over alcohol i'll take this over most things 
maybe not alcohol, maybe alcohol, half, half and half. <laughs> but I digress, you know, and it's beautiful. It's just beautiful stuff to have. And, uh, and, and the more witchy, the better. Like I can't tell you, the, the first time that I opened up this box to the, for the come to me and it was the Enchantment Moon box and I do believe that that had something to do with Ostara at the time. And it had a theme of love and, and passion and, and things of that nature. And the come to me oil came in that. And I was looking for some come to me oil about two weeks before that. So when I got this in the mail, I was just like, thank you, God. Like, thank you, God. <laughs> and I use it. And, of course, in, if you have this, it's not just for love attraction. It's come to me. In, like, set the intention of what you want to bring. And this will just sweeten that approach up. But you have to focus with it as well. It's not it's not what you think it is. A lot of people think that they can just put hoodoo oil on their skin and that, that's it. That's all you need to do. No, you, you, you make a magical working. It's not enough to put it on your skin. No, it, it is if you're going to really put it on your skin and that's what you're going to focus on for about a day, you know, really focus, like like intense focus, but ain't nobody got time for that. I want to sit down. I want to do my work. I want to rub it all over my body. I want to rub it all over my candle. I want to petition. I want to call in some totems. I want to speak to spirit. I want to burn some incense. And then I'll encapsulate that into a one to two hour ritual and then I'll hold focus and I'll reaffirm that each and every time I wear an oil. But I'm digressing here. I can talk about witchcraft till the cows come home. It's a thing that I love. So stop me. Everyone stop me. Stop me now. <laughs> oh, yes, moon box, moon box. <laughs> yes, yes. It's wonderful. I would like to get a botanical from Australia. Totally different witchery. Yes, that's it. Goldie Tiger Eye. Um, it's totally different. We have such different resources here. We have such different sand. We have such different shells. We have such such different water and, and plant matter. And there are things that grow here that don't grow in any other part of the world. There are creatures that live here that you know, don't live in any other part of the world. Like one of the totems that I work with on a regular basis is the Ulysses butterfly and the other one is the golden silk orb weaver spider. And these are prevalent. These are massive spiders that you will see out in the rainforest. And they are amazing. They are beautiful. And they're a, they are a docile creature that they're not going to scamper and jump on your face. But they are amazing. They are absolutely amazing. <laughs> The giant spider. Oh, yeah. We had a poisonous spider in the backyard. Did we? No, no. It was the was it the grasshopper, right? Yeah. We had we had a terrorizing grasshopper in the backyard, and the kids were screaming. And it's like grasshoppers can be like that big up here, like like they're enormous. And when they hit you, they hurt. They, they, they'll jump and they jump with so much power, they hit you and they hurt, okay? I'm not making this up. We have moths that are the size of your head plus a bit, you know. Things are super-sized up here. Uh, my husband has a video of Savannah with this big moth, like massive, massive, like a bird wing moth. Amazing. Anyways, this, this grasshopper was terrorising, so my husband thought, let's do the cycle of life thing, and he picked up the the um, grasshopper and threw it in the golden silk orb weaver but she couldn't be bothered she was just like i am you know then they're, they're really gentle um creatures but they are beautiful and so we have different we have different natural resources full we'll stop yes you can go um so that's about anything you want darling um so that's about it. That's about all I've got because I could ramble for a little bit longer, but I don't want to. So <laughs> I have been on since I've been on for an hour and 12 minutes. That's enough. That's enough for an unboxing, isn't it? Um, so does anyone have any questions? Did I miss any questions? I'm so sorry if I did. I don't think I did miss any questions. I'm not even catching up with everybody that's on here. You know what they need to do? And this is for those who do live chat will know what I'm talking about. The window for live chats is so small that you need to make it bigger, longer. <laughs> I'm just going to complain now, apparently. Just little Miss Complainer. 
And I think I've missed anything. That's it. All right. So thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Really loved hanging out with you today and doing a live. All right, Savannah. All right. No, no, I don't want it, darling. I don't. Um, I really loved hanging out with you guys today and I really loved doing a live unboxing of the moon box. I think that um, it's just worth just it's it's worth it you know it's it's a worthy um thing if you have the if you have the cash to spare i mean don't go hungry for it but if you have the cash to spare and you're like eh, i don't know i don't know um it is it is it's one of those incredible products that you can't get anywhere else there's lots of subscription box out here and granted i haven't even i don't know half of them i don't know half of them this is the first subscription box that's come my way, so it, but it is the most amazing. I don't have to go too far to find out that information because those people who do get it, who do purchase it, are all opening it up on YouTube going, this is amazing. You don't open things up on YouTube unless they are pretty good. You know, if it was really crappy, you'd be like, I'm not going to open that up. <laughs> I'm not going to show people that I spent money on that crap. You know, it's just not worth it. So the moon box is celebrated worldwide for a reason. And um, they don't pay me to say any of this. Let me just tell you that. I'm not getting masses of money. I'm not getting any money at all to say this. I just like them. And when I like something, I'm dedicated to it. It's like a friend. When I like a friend, I'm dedicated to it. When I like a cause, I'm dedicated to it. So that's me. <laughs> I'm pretty dedicated. I'm loyal. <laughs> what you're seeing here is loyalty. That's called loyalty. <laughs> so with all that said and done, guys, much love. Many blessings to you. Thanks for hanging out with me. Actually, I think I had a, a, a statement. I, what's the date today? Oh, shit. Oh, my gosh. I am going to be live tomorrow. I do believe I'm going to be live tomorrow on the Sacred Circle with um, with Cricket song, song of Lunar Wisdom and we're going to be talking about protection magic, I think. I think. So, um, yeah. What are you going to do? So, Lunar Wisdom, protection magic, me tomorrow sometime. I don't have the time zones sorted yet, so bear with me. Um, but, yeah, if you want to input there, uh, uh, go in there and throw some, um, not even some questions, just throw some good stuff out there on protection magic. Everyone's got something to say about protection magic. It's just not said enough, in my opinion. So um, it's the season of it for me, at least, and so it's a subject that's hot on my mind, and I'm writing another article, another blog post about it. So there you go. Uh, okay, so I'm leaving now, I promise. I'll talk to you all very soon. Mwah. Much love and many blessings. Please.